All right, guys, let's slow things down all the way to 80 BPM, and we're going to talk about lo-fi. Now, the number one word I would use to describe lo-fi is nostalgic. It is a genre that makes us reminisce of the good old times when life was simple and when our grandparents walked barefoot up a hill to get to school every morning. And this nostalgia is represented by the sound selection. These drum sounds aren't clean. They're very dirty and dusty, like they are being played out of an old vinyl player or tape machine. And on top of that, a lot of ambience is added to really set the mood. Now, the drum pattern in lo-fi is fairly simple. The snare is going to be going on the two and the four, and the kick is going to be having a bit of swing on it. The hi-hats are usually just doing a basic two-step, and to give it a bit more feeling, the hi-hats are slightly shifted later to give it a more human sound. Now, boom bap is a popular hip hop genre during the 90s. This is a very conscious style of hip hop that features rappers like Nas and the Wu Tang. Now, the name boom bap comes from the sounds of the actual beat. The boom represents the kick, and the bap represents the clap or the snare. And those are the two most important sounds in the beat. Just like before, the snare is going to be on the two and the four, and the kick is going to be swung. So, you're probably wondering how is this different from lo fi, and this is mainly going to be through the sound selection. Much like a sprite at your local McDonald's, these drums would be characterized as crispy. Lo fi might use sounds found on a drum machine, while the sounds in boom bap are similar to the sounds you would find in a drum kit. They have a lot more high end and a lot more energy. And if you add a cool little bass line under it, then you got yourself a boom bap beat. Dear American spiritual individual, blah blah blah. Now the next drum pattern we will simply call the Drake. Hey, what's good? It's Drizzy. This is a beat that's popularized by Drake and his producer 40 in songs like Harvester. It's perfect for those 2 a.m. drives on the highway thinking about how she never really loved me. Now these drums are extremely minimal. You have a kick, and instead of a snare, you might have something like a tom. And the drum pattern itself is very open. The kick is very spaced out, and there's only a little bit of syncopation on the snare. There might be some percussion or fills in between, but those are very subtle and tucked away. And the main characteristic of this drum pattern is that there's very little high end in it. Once you remove those high frequencies, it really gives you that feeling like you're underwater. And to top it off, you can add a voicemail to really seal the deal. Alright, that was depressing, let's move on to something more fun, reggaeton. This is a genre very popular in Latin America. Some notable artists are Bad Bunny and Carol G. Its main characteristic is the rhythmic pattern known as tresillo. This rhythm is when you divide two beats and create three divisions within them like this. This pattern is the main driving force for a lot of music. Now the kick is going to be doing steady quarter notes, and the snare is going to be the one that's accentuating the tresillo rhythm. And on top of that, you can add some hi-hats and other lively percussion. And it's also good to know that the sounds used in reggaeton are very colorful and distinct. Now we're going to go up to 100 BPM and talk about dancehall. Dancehall originated in Jamaica in the 1970s, and later on it started to go into the mainstream with artists like Drake and Rihanna starting to make songs in that genre. Now the tresillo rhythm is still very apparent here, but now it's a bit more open. The kick is not as consistent as it was in reggaeton, it's a bit more spaced out, and the snare still follows that tresillo rhythm, but now it has a much more diverse pattern. The hi-hats in dancehall sound very modern nowadays, they're very bouncy with a lot of rolls similar to something you would hear in trap. And on top of that you can add percussion like shakers to give it more energy. All right, now you know dance hall. Now you can go and wine pon di I feel like the cool teacher say, like, oh, why don't we guys, why don't we take it outside today? <laughs> okay. So we're gonna go to 100 BPM and we're gonna talk about Trap Soul. And this is popularized by the artist Bryson Taylor from his album, Trap Soul. Now the cool thing about Trap Soul is that it basically has the same elements of trap music, but it's just done at a slower tempo. So in terms of the drum sounds itself, we are looking for the exact same things as trap. We are looking for punchy, hard hitting drums. For the drum pattern, usually the snare is gonna be on the two and the four, but now since we're halftime, it's now gonna be on the three and the seven. The kick is gonna have a bit of syncopation and the hi-hats are gonna be doing a two step as usual. And just like in regular trap, I'm gonna add some cool hi-hat rolls to give it a bit more fun detail. And that is Trap Soul. Say hi to YouTube. You wanna say hi to YouTube? <laughs> that was a really cute doggy. So now we're gonna move on to a really cool genre called Ama Piano. So this is a genre that originates from South Africa. We're gonna start with a four on the floor kick. And by the way, this kick is going to sound very soft. That's actually one of the only constants in the genre. There's not really a definitive snare pattern they use, but there is a lot of percussion. I added a shaker just doing a really basic rhythm. And then I added some rim shots to really accentuate that chasseo rhythm. And then I also added some congas to give it a bit more life. 
Now the most recognizable sound in Ama piano is gonna be their bass line. So the bass line itself is a very distinct sound. It's very punchy and it's very fast. And what I love about these bass lines is it just straight up goes crazy. That's not an exaggeration. They just kind of do whatever they want. So sometimes I'm following the kick, I'm following the snare. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm doing triplets, I'm doing rolls, I'm doing triplet rolls. I'm rolling off the triplets, I'm tripping off the rolls. And with that, we have Ama piano. Now we're going to look at one of the most popular genres and that is pop. So there are many different types of pop music, but the one we're gonna look at is the disco inspired one popularized by artists like Dua Lipa and Daft Punk. It's a very nice mid-tempo, jump in the air kind of pop. Like this. Like that type, okay. First things first, we are going to start with a four on the floor kick. If you don't know what that is, that is when the kick is going to be played on every quarter note. A snare is gonna be on the two and the four and then the hi-hats are gonna be hitting the off beats. So you probably think this drum pattern sounds a bit boring, and by itself it kind of is. But the rhythm and groove really come in from the melodic instruments. So I have this bass line here that's doing a lot of syncopation, and this contrasts really nicely with the steady drum pattern. And then I have instruments like the muted guitar and the strings that are doing a much more interesting pattern. Now we're going to move on to Bossa Nova. Bossa Nova, also known as Please Stand By, we're having technical difficulties type beat. This is a genre that blends Brazilian rhythms with American jazz. The snare doesn't really have a set rhythm, but it's very heavily emphasized on syncopation. The snares are really hitting those off beats to create that bounce. Now this might sound a bit off, but it's always going to meet that downbeat at the end of the phrase to give it a bit of structure. In terms of the drum sounds itself, we are going for live sounding drums that you would hear on a jazz drum kit. So I have these brush snares here doing a very simple pattern. I'm also adding some ride cymbals and a couple more snare hits to give it a bit more syncopation. And then when the instruments come in, everybody's following that exact same pattern. They're hitting the same off beats and they're doing the same phrases. And this is when it starts to sound really nice and consistent. Now the next drum pattern we're going to look at is R&B. Now this one's gonna sound a bit different from the other ones because we're gonna be using a different time signature. So all the beats that we were listening to before are at a 4-4 meter, which means that one beat is equal to four quarter notes. In this one, we're going to be doing a 6-8 time signature. And this means that one beat is equal to six eight notes. So usually music is divided by four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But in this case, it's going to be divided into three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Five, six. So this is a time signature that a lot of R&B music uses. Some examples are If I Ain't Got You by Alicia Keys and Gravity by John Mayer. But the drum pattern is still very simple. So the hi-hats are going to be playing eighth notes. The kick is going to be on the one and the snare is now going to be on the four. The kick can be in other places to give it more rhythm, but that's going to be the main beat. It's kind of the same feeling as the other beats, but it's just a bit of a different bounce. People say that four, four meter sounds a bit more square, while six, eight sounds a bit more round. But overall, it's a very simple and open drum pattern. So the next genre we're going to look at is Shuffle Trap. You probably haven't heard of this because I just made it up. If there's a real name for this, let me know, but I don't know it. So there are some hip hop songs out there like Black Skinhead or Watch Me that use the shuffle rhythm and then just kind of combines it with hip hop elements. So for now, we're gonna call the Shuffle Trap, but if you know the name, please let me know. So the shuffle rhythm is a popular pattern that you'd mostly hear in jazz music. This is when we would take even beats like this and then instead create an uneven long short pattern. So now that we have that rhythm established, let's look at the drum pattern. So the snare as usual is going to be on the two and four and this time we are looking for big layered snares and then the kick drum is going to be the one that's focusing on that shuffle rhythm and that's pretty much the base of it but i added some vocal effects to give it a bit more color and then i also added some toms doing triplets at the end i kind of feel homeless right now do i look like i'm begging for money here the next genre we're going to take a look at is brazilian funk this is one of the most popular growing genres at the moment brazilian funk originated in rio de janeiro and it combines some brazilian rhythms with hip-hop influence so there's a very specific rhythmic pattern that brazilian funk uses and it sounds like this so to start i have a couple jumps following this pattern and i just added a little bit of variation at the end of it in terms of the kick i'm looking for the fattest kick sample i have and then i'm really emphasizing that downbeat as well as some other areas and then once we have that it's time to add some percussion to give it some more color so i have the shaker here doing a really open pattern and then i have some extra percussion that are filling in some more off beats and then once you combine that with a hypnotic vocal chant and a cool bass line then we have the really fun Another genre that's really starting to make waves is Jersey Club. Don't quote me on this, but I'm gonna assume that the genre originated in clubs from Jersey. But, spe speculating. So there is one very distinct rhythm that defines Jersey Club, and it sounds like this. So basically, the kick is going to be doing two quarter notes, and then it's going to follow that Jersey rhythm. And that's basically it. You can be done with just that. But I'm gonna add a couple more things you might hear in other Jersey Club beats. So for one thing, I'm gonna just add some hi-hats to some normal 
two steps. Something that's really popular is adding some snaps at the end of the brace. And I'm also gonna add this bed squeaking sound that you're gonna hear in a lot of Jersey Club music right now. Now let's move on to trap, one of the most popular genres of the last few years. So trap originated from Atlanta, Georgia, and a trap is commonly known as a place where you would sell illegal drugs. Like low-key, the back of the building I'm in kind of feels like a trap. So let's take a look at the drum pattern. So the hi-hat is going to be mainly doing a two-step pattern, but to give it a bit more life, I'm going to add a couple extra notes and a couple of rolls. The snare is going to be on the three and the seven, and then I also have some percussion hitting the offbeats, and it's usually going to have a pattern like this. And then I also have the kick hitting the downbeat and a couple offbeats as well. I'm freezing. Holy sh In terms of the 808, we are usually looking for short, punchy sounds like this. And this really helps give it that bounce, and it's also good for doing things like rolls as well. And that is trap music. Now we're gonna move on to drill music. Drill is a subgenre of hip hop that originated in Chicago, and it's quickly become one of the most popular genres with artists like Central C and Pop Smoke. Given that it's dark and aggressive, sometimes it can be confused with trap, but there are a couple differences between them. Instead of doing a two step, the hi hat or counter snare is going to be following the Tristeo rhythm. It doesn't have to follow this exactly, but it's going to be used as a guideline. So here I'm adding a couple extra notes and rolls, and that's just gonna be tucked under that main pattern. Instead of the snare being on the three and the seven, now it's going to be on the three and the eight. And this time the kick isn't gonna have as much significance patient it's really gonna hit those strong beats on top of that some popular sound effects you can add are gunshots and one of the most notable characteristics of drill is the 808 instead of a short punchy 808 now we are using a long sustained one and this is going to be used for slides and cool fills and that is drill All right, guys, let's get into the fashion. So the next one we're going to look at is pop again. So this time we're gonna look at pop that's inspired by synth music during the 80s. So some examples are Stay by Kid Leroy and Blind Moonlights Lights by The Weeknd. In terms of the drum pattern, this genre takes a lot of inspiration from classic rock and roll. This is gonna be really simple. We're gonna have the kick on the one and three, the snare on the two and four, and then we're gonna have the hi-hats doing eighth notes. And to add some spice, we're gonna put in some double kicks as well. So this is basically it, but now all we have to do is change the drum sounds themselves. So the sounds we're using now are gonna be synthesized instead of recorded on a drum machine, and these sound very punchy and electronic. So now we're gonna replace all these old head sounds, these boomer sounds, with new modern sounds. And with that, we have ourselves a nice simple pop beat. The next genre we're going to look at is juke. So this is a genre that started in Chicago, and it's often accompanied by a dance known as Chicago footwork. I can't do it. So this is a very fast genre with a lot of energy and a pretty complex drum pattern. First thing you should know is all the sounds here are gonna be used from the classic Roland 808 drum machine. The clap is going to be on the two and the four, the hi-hats are gonna be doing a combination of eighth and 16 notes, and the kick is going to be doing a bit of syncopation. One of the main characteristics you might hear in juke music is the toms. They usually don't have a set pattern, but they're always very fast and complex. So here I have a combination of high and low toms, and in here I'm just doing interesting 16th note patterns. And the last thing that is a staple in Chicago juke is adding in some kind of vocal sample, and we're just putting this into the beat to give it a bit more energy. The next genre we're going to look at is drum and bass. So this is a subgenre of EDM that started in the UK, and this genre originated from another one called Jungle, which we will talk about later. But once again, this is a very up-tempo genre. The snare is going to be on the two and the four, and the kick is usually going to be following this pattern. In terms of the hi-hats, we can either do eighth notes or 16th notes, so I decided to do a combination of eighth and 16th notes. You notice with these fast genres, the drums start to get really simple, and that's because with these genres, it's really easy to make the drums clutter. And then all we have to add in is our bass, which will give us our drums and our bass, which makes drum and bass. The next genre we're going to look at is jungle. So this is a subgenre of EDM that started in the 90s, and as I mentioned before, this is the father of drum and bass. Now the main component of jungle music is using break beats from old records. So a break beat is a short section of drums that would happen during the break of a song, and then DJs would sample this little section and then loop it over and over again. A well-known example that you definitely heard is the Amen break. So I have a drum kit emulator here, so let's make a break beat from scratch. The first thing I'm going to do is bring the tempo down to around 100. The key to a good break beat is a lot of syncopation on the snare. So here I'm really emphasizing some off beats. I'm making sure the pattern is varied and interesting. And I'm also shifting the notes over and changing the velocity so it sounds as natural as possible. And the next thing I'm going to do is run some plugins over it to make it sound more vintage. And then all I have to do is bring the tempo back up to 170 and we should have ourselves a nice jungle beat. Alright 
guys, we're on the last one, so let's just talk about a nice chill genre known as hardstyle. So this is also a subgenre of EDM, and this started in the 1990s in Netherlands. Now the funny thing about this one is that the drum pattern is actually as simple as it gets. It's basically just a four on the floor kick. But the thing that's interesting about it is that this single kick is a very complex sound. There is a lot of sound design that goes into it, so let's make one from scratch. So I have a synthesizer here, and the first thing I'm going to make is a distorted tonal sound. This kick is actually going to be acting as the kick and the bass at the same time. Once I have that sound, the next thing I'm adding is a low swell that will come up after. After that, I'm adding some compression and distortion to give it more grit. And then after that, I'm adding a kick sample at the beginning to give the overall sound more punch. And that is our hard style kick. Now the only thing left after to do is follow the chord progression of our song, and then we're done. If you have any suggestions, leave a comment. If you like this video, leave a like. If you really like this video, subscribe. If you didn't like this video, leave. Just leave. Get out of here.